Founding of the Hittian religion, Apsaras was born in Lemuria. He grew up in a rather poor but comfortable surroundings. His tribe was rather large. He was given the name Homboto at birth, but when he became a tribal priest he took up the name Apsaras, which meant exalted leader. Apsaras was not completely satisfied with his tribal religion, however. At the age of 96, he went up in the mountains to meditate on the matter. He stayed in the mountains away from his people for six months. One night during a terrible storm of rain and lightning, the clouds suddenly went away and all became very still. Suddenly a bright light appeared near Apsaras and a spirit form materialized beside Apsaras. Apsaras was badly shaken as he had never witnessed such a thing in his life. The spirit which had materialized into the form of a beautiful woman suddenly spoke to Apsaras and told him not to be afraid as she had been sent by the Creator to tell him the truth of all things. She said her name was Belisa and that she was a divine spirit who lived in the abode of the Creator and that Apsaras had been chosen to lead the people of Earth out of the path of darkness. She told Apsaras that the Creator was called Aradia, that Aradia meant the thought as it was the all one great thought that created everything, that Aradia created everything perfect that only man saw fit to make everything imperfect, that Aradia was both positive, good, and negative bad, male and female, and that all there was was in fact the manifestation of Aradia, that all there was was God, that Apsaras was God, that she was God. The trees, the flowers, the clouds, the water, the animals, the birds, the fish, the mountains, the rivers, the rocks, the sands, the wind, the storms, the sky, the stars, and everything was God. That in the beginning was the thought, and the thought thought of all that there is, and it became so, as the thought was the creator. That the thought created God from that which it thought, and that nothing was created except from itself. For all that there was, or ever hoped to be, was of itself. That the creator wanted to keep no secrets from mankind. She told him that the creator wanted to instruct him, Apsaras, to go into all the earth and tell everyone who cared or wanted to listen, the truth of all things, and to tell them the mysteries of all things. She told him that every human at birth there was implanted in them, the power of the Creator. But that man must first learn to use this power in a positive way, and that he could have anything he so desired, as long as he was positive in all action and all thought. If he instead used this power for negative purposes, it would eventually destroy him. She told him the Creator set up no set rules or laws for man to live by, that there was only a master plan or formula in which all things were created by. But if man misused this power, it would go against him, that this power should be used for good intent only, and it would serve him well. She told him that everything around him was of equal existence with himself and all his fellow creatures, so that humans were not the only ones to be called people, as there were the animal people, the plant people, the rock people, the fish people, the snake people, and that of every species there were people, that everything had an intelligence, but man had not come to understand this as man had misused his power and had fallen from the Creator's grace. She told Apsaras to go down from the mountain and gather some of those who would listen of these things and travel to all parts of the earth and tell others along the way these truths also. She told him because there would be those that would continue to misuse these powers, that many things she would tell him must be kept secret, and to teach only those who he knew were of good intent, and who were to learn of these secret teachings, that they should swear unto secrecy before him. She then told him many secret things. Shortly thereafter, Apsaras went down out of the mountains and went amongst his people, and told them of what had happened to him while in the mountains and the message given him by Belisa. The people were amazed to hear of such things, but they respected Apsara as he was their high priest, and they listened intently of what he told them and accepted. One day, Apsaras gathered some of his elders of his tribe and told them to prepare themselves as he was nearly ready to journey into all the earth and spread the truth of all things, but that first he must return back to the same mountains for further instructions as she had told him that he was to return for more instructions when he was ready to travel. Apsaras again went unto the same spot as he had been before in the mountains. He called out to Belisa to return to him but received no reply. He meditated for many days thereafter, believing that she would return when the time was right. On night while he was meditating, a terrible storm arose, the thunder clapped loudly, shaking the very ground he stood upon. Suddenly a filament of light appeared in the clouds, the storm stopped, and a voice louder than the thunder spoke to him, saying, I am Aradia, the Creator. I have selected you, Apsaras, to be my messenger of this earth, to go into all the earth and spread the truth of all things. Amongst the tribes and among the people of earth are many good teachings and many good religions, but they do not know the truth of all things. Therefore go into all the earth and teach them the things for which I will instruct you of. I make all that there is and made everything perfect, and meant for man to keep everything perfect, 
but also gave man the power to do with the world as he pleased. If you do positive things, only positive things will come to you, and will come to you tenfold. If you do negative things, only negative things will come to you and will return tenfold. You must not only act positive, but you must think positive as well, as your thoughts alone are powerful. All that I know, you are to know. What I can do, you too can do. I will send to you an army of divine spirits that will watch over you and protect you. But you must think and act positive, for they cannot protect you. Everyone must be born again of fire and of water, for which your bodies are made of. Many times over to be worthy to rejoin me in my abode. I sent your spirits out from my abode and gave you material bodies, and placed you upon the earth that you would help one another and live in harmony, so that you would prove yourselves worthy to live in my abode. But because many chose not to get along with one another, he must be born yet again so that in each lifetime, he would work a little harder in being positive and come unto my abode. All children who pass from their bodies before the age of nine years, come directly to me for they are in their last rebirth. Those that pass from their bodies before fifty years, live but twenty-five more years in another life, and pass unto my abode. Those that live well beyond all others also come unto my abode. My abode is called AKA, for AKA means place of the Creator. There are three levels in my abode. The first is for the saints, those that have given their lives in spreading my message to others. Theirs is the throne for which I sit and which is my house. On this level their power will be unlimited. They shall think thoughts and the thoughts shall become things, and they shall create without end, and their power shall be without end. The second level is for those that have served me well, but have fallen many times by the wayside. Theirs is the outer garden where they shall live in bliss for eternity, but shall not create along with me. The third level is for those that live by the things for which I teach them, but who fall from grace before the presence of my saints. This is the outer kingdom. In this place which I call Summerland is the waiting place before rebirth. But there are those which shall remain in Summerland for all eternity, according to their works. There are those that shall remain here for many eons of time before returning to the flesh and be once again among mankind. I have also created Hod for those that chose not to live by any of these things, but only to live in a negative way. They shall be known as the children of Hod, for their spirits will be negative spirits and go on to Hod as Hod is a negative place. The children of Hod shall lie, shall make trouble and steal from the positive people, but shall go on to Hod the kingdom of outer darkness, of torment without end, and shall be ruled by the forces of darkness and destruction. From this day forth, I shall open up your mind and you shall know many of my secrets, and how to use your power. I shall recite to you many secret teachings for which you shall tell but to a select few, as there are those that would misuse these things, but many things that I shall teach you will not be a secret as they cannot do harm. You are to place these teachings upon stone, tablets of clay, sheaves of leather and the bark of trees, that they shall become a permanent record of all these things, and to be given to all mankind. You shall call these teachings the cure beth, which means the words of the Creator. You shall also write into this record your entire mission of spreading the truth, and give unto others of your calling the right to complete these records if you do not finish them. All the secrets that I instruct you upon shall not be written in this book, but shall be passed from word of mouth for generations yet to come. Go now unto all the world after receiving all of my instructions, and spread the truth of all the things to those willing to hear the truth, for which I have told you. Apsaras then stayed in the mountains for some time recording upon stone and clay tablets, the messages for which Aradia gave him, and for which was to become the Q.R. Beth. After Apsaras had recorded all he had received in this place, he went down out of the mountains and returned once again amongst his elders, and told them what had taken place and to ask them to return to the mountains with him and bring down the records. Shortly thereafter the elders returned with him and brought the records down out of the mountains. Upon returning to their villages, leather was tanned and made into sheaves, whereas the records upon stone and clay tablets were transcribed upon the sheaves of leather and put into bindings. This ends Q, bit 1. If you like what you are hearing, feel free to like and subscribe. Kingdomofsoul.org